there are better ways to keep cool. Call KS Services and receive a new Bryant unit with no payments and no interest for 18 months. Stay cool now and pay later. Visit callks.com for more. Here's your weather video for this Sunday, August the 16th. I'm meteorologist Bill Murray. 51 years ago today, the Gulf Coast was warily watching Hurricane Camille in the southern Gulf of Mexico. And uh, NHC director Robert Simpson was flying blind, literally. Uh, very rudimentary satellites back then. Um, you know, recon at that point was hobbled because all the Navy planes were flying in Project Storm Fury, which was an attempt to seed Hurricane Debbie uh, south of Bermuda. They didn't even have any recon planes at his uh, fingertips, so he had to reach out to the Air Weather Service in Illinois and uh, uh, ferry down a, an aging constellation to uh, look at Camille. And they sent back a very disturbing report that day, about 11.35 in the morning, saying that uh, the pressure with storm was down to 908 millibars. Now, they thought the winds were about 100 miles an hour at this time. And the Hurricane Center, interestingly enough to me, didn't really react to that first report. But later reports from that plane showed the pressure was down to 905 millibars, and the flight level winds were 140 knots and they knew they had a real problem on their hands. Now, that morning, a hurricane watch was issued from Biloxi to St. Mark's, which is in the Florida Panhandle, the eastern side. So everybody was on alert. Just a couple of hours later, they issued a hurricane warning, but from Fort Walton to St. Mark's, so really covering Destin, Panama City, thinking that the hurricane was going to turn to the northeast, but of course it didn't. Uh, it continued on more of a northwest course and uh, moved inland on the night of the 17th, on a Sunday night on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. Our tropics uh, active, but nothing like that day 51 years ago. Josephine is tracking just north of the, the Greater Antilles this morning, but the impacts are small because of the track. The storm is encountering lots of wind shear. It will probably weaken to a tropical depression later today. It will continue to the northwest. We'll watch it later this week. It could make a comeback. Uh, as wind shear decreases eventually. And a little surprise, Tropical Storm Kyle uh, will lose tropical characteristics, uh, become post-tropical later today as it uh, passes some uh, 450 miles south of Newfoundland. Uh, watching a disturbance there um, some uh, 300 miles or so east of the islands, wouldn't think that's going to be a problem. Uh, watching a stronger disturbance coming off the African coast now that I think will become the dominant system in the next 10 days. Watch it in the Caribbean uh, sometime over the next uh, week or so. And then uh, it could be in the Gulf of Mexico, uh, as you'll see in just a moment. Uh, so this is the upper air pattern. These are the uh, upper height anomalies this morning showing a broad trough developing over the eastern United States. Huge uh, ridge of high pressure over the uh, western part of the country. That's part of the problem with all the heat that we'll talk about in just a minute. This trough over the east is going to intensify, and it'll be centered over uh, northern Louisiana, central Mississippi by Thursday. And that's going to mean some actually refreshing mornings by summer standards. Dew points down in the middle 60s into Alabama, and that means we'll see some lows in the middle and upper 60s, at least for areas north of Montgomery. Uh, through much of the week ahead, and that will be quite refreshing. Now, these are uh, precipitable water values by Thursday, showing well below normal values across Alabama and the south. It means it's going to be harder to scare up a, a shower or a thunderstorm. Now, deadly heat wave in the southwest. Phoenix, 114 yesterday. That's the 39th day this year that they've been above 110. Of course, if you remember from a week ago, the record was uh, you know 33 so now they've blown past that several more days of over 110 coming this is from the national weather service in phoenix uh, these areas are showing up in magenta excessive heat warnings uh, and pulling no punches the national weather service in phoenix saying heat of this magnitude is rare dangerous and deadly here in alabama cold front is heading our way we actually had a little cold front spin up sort of right over us yesterday. Low pressure tracked off to the east. Um, and really almost nothing in the way of showers and thunderstorms yesterday. But another, well, at least for areas northwest of I-59. Today, this uh, cold front will move in with a few isolated showers and thunderstorms. But I can't get too hopeful about your rain chances. 
Um, this is a depiction off the HRRR one kilometer um, uh, AGL composite reflectivity. Uh, showing just a few isolated showers and storms They're actually going downhill from this point. I sort of picked out about what would be the max around 4 o'clock, and they go down pretty quickly after that. So uh, not much to hope for in the way of rainfall today. Now, for Monday, I think it's mostly a dry day. Uh, though that drier air settles in here. The front is over South Alabama. It moves out in the Gulf. And, hey, we'll have to keep an eye on that, too. I didn't really talk about that. But that's always, um, you know, when you get a frontal system in the Gulf in the summertime over those warm waters, that's always a potential to watch. Um, but, you know, moving ahead to Wednesday, um, well, really, this is Tuesday afternoon on the GFS. Looks like a front tries to sneak in here again. Maybe a few isolated showers and thunderstorms Tuesday afternoon and evening, but I wouldn't count too much on that. And then I just fast forward to Saturday because no sense showing these maps over and over. Just uh, scattered showers and thunderstorms Wednesday through the weekend. Highs uh, will be near 90, overnight lows. Starting off in the middle and upper 60s and warming toward near 70 by the end of the week. You can see a lot of moisture there in the western Gulf of Mexico um, as um, moisture tries to come around the backside um, up into the uh, mid south. We'll be watching that closely. Now, these are rainfall amounts from the uh, WPC showing that, um, you know, if we're lucky, we could get a quarter inch in the I 59 quarter less to the northwest. Maybe a little bit better rainfall amounts over southeastern Alabama. But uh, here, um, that I-59 area is going to be sort of the dividing line. These are temperatures off the National Blend of Miles. It's going to be near normal for highs. Uh, this is for Birmingham, showing right around 68. Areas to the north, lower, or, um, actually not lower, but maybe middle 60s. Uh, areas uh, around Montgomery, around 70, and then lower 70s over south Alabama. Now, uh, Voodoo Land, I'm going to go out to um, early on Sunday the 30th, uh, the GFS depicting that we might see a couple of tropical systems. One, the Bay of Campeche, perhaps another moving um, past Hispaniola and uh, maybe moving into eastern Cuba. That, of course, would be something to watch. We'll be keeping a very, very close eye on that. We'll be talking with the National Weather Service's Severe Weather Program Director, on Weather Brains Monday night. That's going to be a great show. Um, be uh, talking about how the program has moved and adapted over time to big outbreaks like 1974 and, uh, of course, 2011, all the way back to Palm Sunday in 1965. We'll also be talking about the National Weather Association annual meeting. It's going to be virtual this year. And the Weather Ready Fest with Alan Gerard and Ted Laricos, Todd Laricos, from uh, that great organization, the National Weather Association and its foundation. Be recording that, as always, Monday night at 8 o'clock. You can always consume the podcast wherever you get your podcast. You can watch live at live.bigbrainsmedia.com or on James's uh, YouTube channel. Well, that's your weather video for this Sunday, August 16th. I'll have notes on the blog and update on the forecast at noon and uh, updates throughout the afternoon and any showers and storms that develop. But until I get to sit here and talk to you next week, have a great week. And as I always tell you, keep an eye to the sky because you'll always have something fun to look at. Never wait for hot water again with a tankless water heater from Plumbing Experts. Tankless water heaters are easy, convenient, and now more affordable with a no-interest financing for up to 18 months. Stop with the cold showers and wasted water and call Plumbing Experts today.